Hello and welcome back to Shorties here on the Base Channel. This time, well, you've heard of the Thunder from Down Under. Now let's take a look at the Fender Pretender. It's a Squire Mustang Bass. Bye, Fender. <laughs> oh, this is the classic. I didn't say it's the classic vibe. Shit. Today's short scale bass is the Mustang as made by Squire, as opposed to the Mustang as made by Fender, as opposed to the Mustang as made by Ford. So right out of the box, we noticed with this one, number one, wow, this is a gorgeous freaking bass. It had... A really, really great finish. This is Surf Green, which is a little bit different than the, the Seafoam Green PJ that we have featured on the channel a lot. It has a great neck profile. It feels really nice. The edges of the fretboard feel like they're slightly rolled. We don't have any fret sprout here. We don't have any um, obvious you know, flaws in, in fit and finish. Now, it wasn't all sunshine and roses out of the box. The strings were detuned a whole bunch uh, right out of the box. And when we tuned it up, we noticed that it had a little bit of a back bow on the neck. So we had to do a whole lot of truss rod adjustment just to get it working. A little bit of bridge adjustment, things like that. Now it plays pretty well. Probably could be fine tuned just a hair more. For a bass that costs about $459, I think that it could have had more attention to detail for sure, but it wasn't a, a massive undertaking to get it kind of back into spec. Speaking of back into spec, let's check out the specs for this Mustang. By the way, this is a Squire Classic Vibe 60s Mustang, so it's a little bit different spec than it would be if it were, say, a Squire Affinity model. Much like most short scale basses, this one's a 30 inch scale length. It's got a slim, comfortable C-shaped neck, nine and a half inch radius fingerboard. The fingerboard, by the way, is made of Indian laurel wood. So it's not your, uh, it's not your pal Faro and it's not your rose wood. The neck and the headstock have this nice, well, vintage tintage going on. So it's this nice amber color over the maple. The bent metal plate bridge has the string through option, which is a nice little feature. Just a regular volume and tone all passive. This one is actually kind of heavy. I think this is probably a nine pound base, so it's definitely heavier than some of the other shorties that we've looked at, but feels good in the hand. Whereas some of the Mustangs over the last few years have had, you know, kind of a, a normal PJ setup. This one just has the split single coil in the kind of P configuration, but again, it's the smaller single coil, you know, so it's sort of like a split version of the 51 single coil pickup. All right, now I'm going to probably say this wrong, but the body is a wood called Niato, or Niato, or Niato. Now, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but Skeletor would say Niato. So once we got all the uh, neck adjustments sorted out and everything, this is a pretty solid player. Now you might remember a few episodes ago, we did the Squire Bronco bass. So you'd think at first glance, oh, these are very similar basses, but there's actually a bunch of differences. Um, really the, the body shape is the same, the scale length is the same, and the general construction is overall the same. But the differences, at least to me, mean that I would definitely go for the Mustang over the Bronco, even though the Mustang is twice as expensive. You've got the split pickup, which I think 
is just a little bit more, you know, of that P character, a little bit more of that Fender base character. It's got the bigger bridge that has the string through option, and it's just overall a little bit better constructed and feels nicer. But they're both pretty good. The Bronco is, it feels like it's a pound, pound and a half heavier though, which is very bizarre for what appears to be very similarly constructed instruments. Oh, and before I put the uh, Bronco down, I will show you the back of the necks as well. Now, I mean, obviously the Bronco doesn't have that vintage tint, but the Bronco has the old skunk stripe, whereas the new base does not. And the Bronco has kind of almost no finish on it. It's a very satiny finish, while the uh, Mustang has a gloss finish on it. So in that particular regard, I think the Bronco wins because I like satin finish necks more than I like gloss necks. But otherwise, I still, I still think that the Mustang is the better buy. Oh yeah, and the uh, tuners are actually different as well. While the Mustang has the classic Fender open back clover style tuners, the Bronco has these sealed Y key tuners that are, I mean, they feel a little bit more cheap, but they're not bad. Well, your mileage may vary, try them both and uh, let us know which one you like better. Both the Mustang and the Bronco are, quote, crafted in Indonesia. Yeah, now I don't know if this is a Fender thing specifically, but uh, it feels kind of cheap to say, oh, crafted in Indonesia, crafted in China, crafted in... Just just say where it was made. I know that Fender... I think Fender started that with the Crafted in Japan series back in the 90s, which I actually think were, quote, crafted in Japan, meaning that they were specially made as a series in Japan with, you know, kind of all the love and care that we had uh, come to expect you know, with the American and Mexican series. But when it comes to stuff that is obviously just mass produced in China, Indonesia, Korea, what have you, the, the use of the word crafted just feels uh, artificial. It feels like it's supposed to be special even though it's probably not gonna be special. Now, I could be wrong about the Crafted in Japan ones too, but I seem to remember that they were very high quality instruments. So if you agree, disagree, or if you don't remember at all, let us know in the comments below. Final thoughts on this one is, um, well, much like uh, Chris's second SG, this one came out of the box from the factory or from the distributor with a couple of problems that were very easily remedied. For a budget instrument under $500, solid instrument. I enjoyed playing it. Uh, it's probably not my favorite uh, in the Shorty series so far, but it's pretty good. Sounds good. This pickup is great. The neck profile on this is good. I would probably knock down the shine a little bit with some scotch bright and give it a satin finish on the neck. But uh, but yeah, especially if you're into modding. A lot of people like modding fenders. It's a pretty good mod platform, I think. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop rambling about this thing. Um, and uh, hey, if you want to pick one of these up for yourself, obviously we've got a link down below to our friends at Zounds, who we thank uh, tremendously for uh, their help. And if you want to get some hot sauce, bam, Regalo Hot Sauce, the official hot sauce of the Bass Channel. Once again, I have been Dave, and this has been Shorties on the Bass Channel. Thank you, and good evening. <laughs>
to do it. I have to do it at least as well as Josh, or people will shit on me. Indonesia. This one's Indonesia. That means it can't remember things. <laughs> it's got Indonesia. As opposed to the Mustang P-51 fighter plane. Anyway, sorry. I don't know about you, I'm Indonesia. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, it's just too many videos. We've shot too many today. Okay. Ooh, string through. I didn't even notice. <laughs> that was the most fucking ADHD thing I've ever heard. We've shot too many videos. It was string through. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm having a good time. <laughs> <laughs>